curve. Take that curve. Oh, damn, damn. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Marty. Hey, having a bad pink day? Man, is this for she for day? I throw myself in the damn lake. <laughs> This morning, I need some clothes. It's about Nakia. Oh, I think about going with her to her sister's wedding. I already prescribed the, the remedy. Old Doc Schwartz says, go. You'll hate it for a while, then you hide for an hour and play with your iPhone on the veranda. Come back in and make mess. Do that twice, and Nakia will be eternally indebted to you. It'll be practically painless for you, too. Okay? Patient cured. Now, what do you got for lunch? <laughs> That's not it at all. Hickory smoked turkey with avocado. Is that okay? <laughs> yep. So what's the problem? Nakia, she's pushing me away from painting florals. Ooh, that is wicked tempering with a man's bread and butter. And marmalade. God, why can't I be left alone to be the artist I want to be? Go on, keep unloading, I'm listening. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, uh, I don't want to be pushed into anything. Not my style, not the subject, not the medium, nothing. It's beyond distressing. Push, push, push. So push back, like this. Hmm? Woman pushes, man pushes back. See, it happened throughout history. And sometimes vice versa. Here, I'll show you. Push, come on, come on. You're crazy, get away from me and sit down. So, serious. I'm gonna have to start charging. Out with it. She wants to have a serious talk this afternoon. Now you're in for it. I guess that's the talk you've been avoiding for a year and a half? What? Instead of doing uh, semi-nude modeling, she wants to have a heart-to-heart? -heart? Not a good omen. What do you think it's about? I don't know, but I can guess. Probably about our relationship. I hate it when they want to talk about our relationship. <laughs> Why can't women accept us for the uncomplicated lumbering boobs that we are? They think that just because they're complicated, we should be. I say, back away. You still want to be the greatest and most famous and richest artist in the world, right? Right, sort of. Just sort of be specific, man. Well, okay, let's define great. And great, like the rainbows above Niagara Falls. They make your jaw drop and your mind go into hyperspace, powerful like the raging force of the falls itself. A good start. But what about rich and famous? Maybe I'm selfish, but I want you to be rich and famous <laughs> while, while realizing your artistic vision. Well, you know, I recoil just a little bit. I recoil at what you say because I think you mean manufacturing kitsch, like humble figurines or pseudo-impressionist sports painting. So I do recoil. Recoil? Huh. Oh, please. You hurt me, my heart. Say you will be rich and famous, given the chance. Yes, if I deserve it, if I followed my true creative path, and the world wants to reward me. Then don't let Nakia and, uh, up the ante on your relationship. Stay married to your heart. Back away if she forces you to choose. You're my friend. I need you to be supportive. Supportive schlamortive. Phone <laughs> Phone rings. Now, you might be wondering why I have an intrusive attitude with Craig. Well, did you ever have a friend that had a, that needs your help in some critical situation? Hmm? And you don't know quite what to do about it? You know what I'm talking about. Even you, right, sir? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Nakia wants to move in with Craig. I mean, it's natural. You've been with somebody for a while, yeah, know what they feel like. Maybe give a kiss, maybe a little bit more. Oh, not real, but you know. Anyway, but with Nikia and Craig, she knows how the paint smells on his vest at the end of a day's work. Now, what did I just do? I told him to push back on her, didn't I? But was that the right advice? What the heck do I know? Maybe Nikia will make him happy. Who am I to judge? I mean, right? But judge I did. Forgive me in advance, will you? I happen to think 
that the biggest commitments that will that, that a bigger commitment will shackle my uh, my uh, friend over here. He's a man on a precipice, and he needs to be pushed in some direction. So I pushed. I think I made a mistake. Man, I hope he doesn't take my advice. Oh my God, that's our calling now. Hello. Craig, it's me, Gwyneth. Gwyneth Ellsworth. Remember me from college? Oh my God, gorgeous. What is Ellsworth? Is that really you? It's awfully nice of you to remember that old nickname. Yes, it's mm -hmm. me. How have you been these years? Oh, a thousand different ways. Hold on just a sec. I don't believe it. It's the prettiest girl in my class at Columbia. My God, Marty, it's incredible. Who I'm talking to? Pinch me. <laughs> I'll look her up. Actually, I've been painting steadily now for about 20 years, going back and forth between florals and nudes, you know. And I've been chosen to exhibit at the Venice Biennale this year. I know. I just read about that in two places. Art World and the Wall Street Journal. Hey, congratulations. So, even though we haven't spoken in years, I felt I had to give you a ring. Are you okay to talk? Maybe I'm interrupting something. Not at all. Good. So, I remembered you a bit, uh, or researched you a bit on the web, and found your phone number. I hope you don't mind. No, it's what everybody does these days. So what have you been up to these dead these years? Oh, little stuff. Well, NASA might send me up in a capsule next year. <laughs> I'm only a finalist. One of ten candidates. It's part of their philanthropists in outer space program. <laughs> have you heard of it? No, I haven't, but cool. Well, if you make it, would you send me a text? I never really got one directly from outer space. <laughs> Gladly. And how about Columbia? Do you have anything to do with our alma mater? Funny you should ask. My real estate company just signed on to rehab 20 square blocks of Morningside Heights. Time magazine says we're bringing affordable housing back to the middle class. <laughs> wow, that sounds like just about five minutes work for a superwoman like you. <laughs> oh, I'm just very fortunate. What can I say? But I didn't call to, out of the blue, to talk about myself. Hey, I'm sincerely interested in what you have to say. So, Craig... <laughs> Whitney, if I might call you that after such a short a chat. Oh, certainly. Say, I was wondering if I could stop by with an idea. Hmm, what kind of an idea? Oh, I'd rather tell you in person. She wants to come over. Uh, sure, okay. Then how about I stop by, say, three? Hmm, I'm afraid that won't work. I have someone coming over here posing for nudes until about four. <laughs> nudes? I knew you did some, but I hope not too often. <laughs> yeah, just about as often as florals. Well, in my opinion, that is a awful waste of your considerable talents. But. How about 4.30? You're in luck. I'm extremely flexible today. 4.30? Hey, that'll be fine. I'm eager to hear about your idea to see if you're still as lovely as I remember. Well, you can get your hopes up about the idea. But as to my looks, well, I'm afraid I've aged terribly. You should expect flabby dolls and humongous thighs. That's a hoax and an insult to reality, I'm sure of it, Quinn. Uh, Winnie? Think what you will, Craig. <laughs> Craigie. Remember I used to call you that? And can you have a projector ready? I want to show you some delightful images. Sure, I can do that. See you soon. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs> Ta-ta! Did you win the key, uh? No, my friend, you are making all the wrong bets, but I must say this about Gwyneth Ellsworth. She is a knockout. Take a look at this picture. That's a bit. Yeah, there you go. And, here, look. Check out this report from Forbes. Huh? 
Check this out, all right? Well, how did they get this info? 2.4 billion, that ain't nothing to sneeze at. But you're cutting it way too close by having her here next to the key session. That girl has big jealousy bones. Oh, not to worry, the key will be long gone by then. I can manage this, trust me. Mm. Look, can I t trust you to make a wise financial decision now? Remember I've told you that you're underinvested in domestic mid-cap funds. That does ring a bell dimly. Look, here. Bright Star Renaissance Fund with a Morningstar great rating. Hmm. What do you recommend? Give it 5% of your portfolio. Do it. I'll get it done today. And as soon as I'm gone, I've got to make this train and about 10 of us promptly. But I might stop back. Why? Gonna meet this Gwen at Ellsworth. Very intriguing. And she probably needs some great investment in this. Uh, don't be silly. With the 2.4 billion she inherited from old Ellsworth, I'm sure she's doing fine. I'll bet that 0.4 billion is exactly the problematic part of her portfolio. Can a handsome man like me be just the one that fix it? Yeah, handsome and modest, huh? <laughs> so may I visit? Yes, you may visit. But I want some time alone with her first. And then hands off, she's mine. Aren't you being a bit greedy? I mean, one woman on her way here, another one in the wings. You have no right to monopolize all the female beauty on the planet. I'll monopolize all I want in my own studio, in my own home. Starting with these macadamia nuts. You have it your own way, Mr. Monopolist. Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, but beware of us little nimble startups. Snapchat and WhatsApp, and I'm taking these. I'll bring back the ball. Uh, Ruben there, Chief Romeo. Ciao, Bobby. As if she'd have any interest in you anyway. Ciao. You're gonna love. I brought the I brought the most wanton silk scarf. Ooh, I do love this. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> mm, definitely alluring in a classical way, yet classically Nubian, maybe Egyptian or Ethiopian. I love your Ethiopian bone structure. <laughs> I'll do some quick sketches. I do have Ethiopian blood in me, you know. Craig? Yeah? I was thinking, your ability to create something lovely from the world, it's so dynamic. Yes. Did you hear that the school district had to lay off art teachers this week because the governor's cut backs? So? I was wondering if we could contribute some money or time to teaching inner city kids how to create beautiful art. What do you think? <coughs> a bad idea. On a small scale, I can spare something. I love the way you care about people, and I love painting your rosette skin tone. Am I rosette today? Always. And I mean that sincerely. But let's get to work, okay? Let's pick up where we left off. This. Ooh, I do love that. Am I good? Well, let's see. So, it isn't on the mark. Here. Do you like my foot? Nope. I adore your foot. This much. Ooh, you're such a doll. So romantic. That's how you make me feel. But you need to... To what? Nothing bad, I hope. No, you just need to better take redirection without a frown. I never frown when you redirect me. <laughs> and I need less butt kiss when I ask you for something different. And I never give you butt kiss. I wouldn't dream of giving you butt kiss. Even when you're a slave driver. Actually, I think you want butt kiss. And I'm not into that. God, sometimes you're worse than Adrian down at the billing office. Mostly, she's worse. Especially with filling out all those HCBA forms. Wrong procedure code for that patient, Nakia. Wrong box, Nakia. She's crazy. As if it makes a bit damn bit of difference. Well, I'm a doubt about some things, too. That you are. I have to be. So 
bear with me when I say this pose has to be a bit more languorous. Mm -hmm. What? No, relaxed. Romantic. Like a flexi straw. Yes, exactly. This is it. That's it. It's perfect. I'm just penciling in your thighs and your knees. Damn, it's hard to do justice to your beauty. You know, this is much more rewarding than medical <coughs> billing. Well, I think there must be some hidden, hidden billing delights that you're choosing not to reveal to me. Well, code 1043 is one of my things. What's that? Priapism. Priapism? <laughs> A never deflating penis? That sounds dangerous. But fun to think about, don't you think? Hmm. Pry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And admit it, you even like the sound of it. Huh. Pry. Nakia. Uh, Nakia. Is, um, it'd be endless. You're moving. And how do we get on this subject anyway? It's your fault. Asking me all those sexy billing full of questions. You've been naughty. Imagine talking 1043s and asking me to keep my composure. I'm losing my artistic concentration, please. You can't. This is portrait number nine, and you said we had to finish number nine to complete the series. I'll shut up. Well, there's no need to go to extremes. Let's just talk slower. Craig. Yes? What are my nine moods of Nakia again? I keep forgetting some. Angry, amorous, bored, contemptuous, defiant, ecstatic, indolent, slothful, and this one, languorous. Craig. Yes. Have you thought about my idea? Uh, about telling Adrian you want to work fewer hours down at the billing office? Well, it's hard for me to advise you on that. I mean, I, I could use you for a few more hours here, a week doing billing and marketing, but my needs vary, so. No, not that idea, silly. You know, about sticking around, sticking to what you're really great at, painting new. Well, my problem with that hasn't changed since Monday. Why should I limit myself to one style? But it's so you, Craig Carson, Prince of Nudes. <laughs> Isn't that what the art world critic called you? No, they called me the Knight of Nakedness. <laughs> but, my dear, let's stay in the moment. I need you to sit down and raise your left leg just a bit. Thank you. You do know nudes are your best style, don't you? Well, you are my favorite model. That won't do. You know, it's not easy pleasing Nakia. I mean, I love her to death. Why won't she simply accept a compliment and being my best model and just move on? I mean, I would. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? That's why I'm not with you. <laughs> she is sweet and lovely. Somebody give me a strategy. Well, it should do. It should please you to no end. You, my darling, should be convinced after all these years that the naked form is the loveliest, most beautiful thing in the world. I am still with you. Turn your head a bit to the left, Miss And when you compare how little a flower can offer, well, flowers can be stunning too. I mean, can a dahlia do this, darling? Can a hibiscus? like this, honey? <laughs> Not that I've ever seen. I've been painting a long time. I mean, can an orchid be orgasmic? Well, never. So it makes sense to? To what? To give it up. Switch to, you know. All the Kia all the time. You're making fun of me. Sweetie. I deny something. I love creating and 
that my public appreciates. Now, why disrupt the relationship we've been building for what? What is it now? The past two years. For me, choosing my style and subject matter, that's what's important to me, as, as water to a fish. Well, glove, glove. I'm sure you can change styles and find some something to like in any style. Oh, you're very glib with your gloves. <laughs> Don't you see, honey? It's not just about the subject matter. It's about us and our new lifestyle. And do you know what would please me? What? If we were to... To what? To kind of move in together. What do you think of that idea? Well, I feel I'm enjoying painting and being with you and singing a, a love song in acrylics. And you, you, you just want to change the subject, change the mood, and, and, and trash this lovely moment we're having here. <laughs> no need to get all indignant about it. Look, I know what you're thinking, that I'm commitment-phobic. Well, didn't I invite you here to be here more often, to work longer hours, and, 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 and to take on new responsibilities? Doesn't that mean that I want you more in my life? I guess. But it would move us up to a much higher level in our relationship. If I were to move in, I'd make it cozy for you. Honey, I'll think about it. But I might not be ready. You have to be prepared for that. You know what? Why don't we just take a break? I mean, for today. Let's just take a break for today. Yeah. I think I'll take a walk around the block. Maybe take some photos of Carol Levine's clematis. God, they're incredible. Yes, they are. And Tom Steigerwald, remember he used to say that they were sublime. You remember that? And that, see, you do love flowers. Sorry I said that. I'm also stopping by my house. I might pick up my pink bikini. Ooh, that would be great. But let's save that for Friday. This afternoon, I'll paint you from that photo that I took. But you always say a photo can't capture my soul. Not the way that you can when I'm here in person. Oh, that's true. But this little photo, it simply captures the outline, the bare trace of the border of your body, and then later, Quintessential Nakia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye, sweetie. All right. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> Sensibility. Oh, I can listen to this. I mean, it's your talent 
for drawing the deep inner structure that yields their true beauty. I live for deep structure. With you, it's not some pedestrian interplay of light and shadow. Well, I wouldn't call all shadow and light play pedestrian, but anyhow, would you like to see my uh, studio and gallery? Lead the way, my dear. Oh, Craig. Craig, I, I knew I loved your floral work uh, from the few gallery pieces I've seen, but oh, Craig. This, this is, uh, I was so impressed when I saw in the magazines and on the websites, but this, like this. So you're a fan. <laughs> it's rare to meet someone like you who's so well educated aesthetically and who likes everything I do. Oh, I did not say I liked everything. Oh, no? uh, what don't you care for? Hmm. Well, I don't want to diminish this serendipitous moment, but that portrait is really beneath you. Really, you should exercise your libido in healthier ways. That is my top model. Model, the key of Washington. Top model? <laughs> Let's avoid this nonsense, shall we? I'm suddenly hot. Do you have a glass of water? Can you afford a moment to chat before we get down to business? Oh, sure. I have more work to do, but I always have more work to do. And what a terrible host I've been. Why don't you take a seat and I'll bring you something. Pronto. <sighs> oh, you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I'm so delighted that you're actually here. I have to stop and think again. I'm picturing you in college, sitting on the steps next to the statue of Alma Mater. <laughs> oh, you remember that, too? I could paint it from memory. You were sitting below Alma, on her left, near the spray of wheat with the crown on top, and you were writing something <coughs> in the notebook. Oh, what a memory. Probably my diary. I was always scribbling back in those days. I remember thinking, how can I meet this beautiful girl, this creature with the extravagant hair, the cutest nose, the most gorgeous eyes, and with those graceful legs? And you found a way, you devil. Hey, I was determined you were so damn pretty. Were? Have I lost so no, much? No, not at all. And then, remember, I found the owl. And then I found the courage to ask you out. I remember. We saw a chorus line and went out to... The Russian tea room. Ah, yes. I remember I loved the Bellini. We had two or three great dates. So why did we stop? I guess we just got distracted by... By life, I suppose. So then only a few months later I met Kent. Wasn't he that little hunchback fellow with <laughs> thick glasses? When, you, when did you start calling him Bunny? Oh, that was nasty. <laughs> don't be so vicious. I might leave if you talk that way. No, 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 don't. What's gotten into you? I think I just got a flashback on my jealousy. I was quite green back then. I don't suppose you knew. <laughs> no. <laughs> and no more insulting behavior. Are we clear? I mean, my husband did everything for me. And all of the creative, interesting things I've been able to do are because of his foresight. I'm sure he was a great guy. <sighs> I don't even want to ask if you're being sarcastic. I just want to move on. I want to come and discuss what I came here for. You know how I absolutely love your floral prints. Well, before we do, I hope you don't mind if I ask a few questions. Well, what would you like to know? Why did you contact me after all these years? Well, this is a little embarrassing. I'm not sure I want to, must I? Not if you really don't. Well, why not? If I tell you, can we move, quickly move on? Sure. Craig, I've always thought you were cute. And I remembered that you were talented, but it was always in the back of the mind kind of way. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I saw the Art World article, and I thought about you, and I thought, 
wouldn't it be great to give Craig a call? So now you understand. Well, I'm glad you did look me up. Craig, I have a particular passion to, I came to talk to you about. I think the world should have a much greater appreciation of your floral works. Don't you? Sure. And we are in a marvelous city of flowers, aren't we? More than any other city. I mean, we have the Philadelphia Flower Show and Longwood Gardens. Who else has anything like that? Nobody. The world's most elaborate gardens and less than an hour outside of town. A worldwide treasure. And so we have a unique opportunity. I want to show you something right now. Do you have a projector? Absolutely. Would you like me to set it up? Yes, immediately. I have something amazing I want to show you. And while you're accommodating me, I would like to speak about my vision. Wow, you have a vision? <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a gateway. An absolutely fabulous floral gateway to our fair city, symbolizing all that gives life and beauty to the planet. Absolutely splendid blossoms. I'm seeing them so vividly. Flowers. Radiant, fantastical flowers standing majestically up, uh, atop our most famous monuments. Exciting! And now, I will give you only a glimpse <coughs> of what I have in mind based on the most rudimentary uh, artist renderings. Let's not even call them artistic. Here, use this flash drive and open the only folder. Here is the first. Isn't it incredible? Can you just imagine? Like a crimson flower standing atop the Ben Franklin Bridge. As drivers from New Jersey enter our town, they see a gigantic 70 foot high Craig Carson rose. <laughs> Done in enamel steel based on my painting. Precisely. <laughs> what do you think? Wow. I'm into it. Show me more. You know what's atop City Hall, don't you? Alexander Calder's statue of Billy Penn. No, 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 no. You're not going to replace Billy Penn. That would be a sacrilege. No, no, I... I, I may be e egotistical, but that is so not happening. I must admit, I had originally planned on replacing Willie Penn, but I do have a fallback position and a little surprise for you. Bernard? Hello. Yes, bring it in now, would you? Yes, he'll be around shortly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Who was that? Oh, my driver, Bernard. He's a very sweet gentleman, and he's bringing the model right now. What model? Can I almost love Where should I place it here? Uh, yes, right there, I think. <laughs> hey, excuse me. Now, won't that be impressive? <laughs> and just think what it'll do for your career. Shall I wait a little bit? Please remember uh, Oh, I, I won't forget. Um, yes, please wait in the auto. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Tell me, Quinny, how could city officials possibly allow this? What can I say? Trust me, they will. Amazing. I guess it's your charm. Do you find me charming? Uh, well, I... I... You don't mind that I'm uh, getting close, do I, you? I suppose I should say I'm shocked, but I'm enjoying all of this way too <laughs> damn much. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being a little 
too forward so early in our reacquaintance? Uh, I don't know what to say. You're like a hurricane. Too so intense? This is the kind of extreme weather I could really enjoy, though. <laughs> still parked outside your studio. Mind if I come over? Must you. <laughs> hey, I have replacement nuts. <laughs> well, that is just so important to me right now. <laughs> and I have a particular recommendation on Renaissance Holdings, plus a zooming stock pick to show you I'm a rocket. Mm. I promise I won't get in your way. <laughs> Why should I believe you after all these years? Because you love me as a dear friend. I can't bore you from my doorstep. See you in a flash. That was my friend Marty. He wants to come over and show me a new investment pick. I love the guy, but he's very persistent, annoyingly so. Sometimes it's best to dispose of clingy people. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? No, oh, I... But I could leave. We could resume at another time. No, no, no. Please stay. Stay. All right. I'm so enjoying our little moment, aren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need the attention. You deserve the attention. TV crews from around the world should be storming you. Right. They should be asking me for my insights on beauty. Not just that. And, and on world peace. And on how to achieve happiness. <laughs> yes, and how to end world hunger. Just some of the funds you'll earn from sales will feed thousands. I'll find a way to stop global warming. Hey, I don't know how, but you're eating me. <laughs> uh, camera crews should follow me, watch me gazing at my blank canvas and seeing how my inspirational magic blossoms. You owe it to posterity. Then me wants to create a madness, dashing paint on the canvas and crafting masterpieces. As the <laughs> camera records my every move. And even me relaxing, taking cocky, my cockatoo on a walk or two. <laughs> Cockatoo on a walk or two. <laughs> oh, see? I love it. You're remarkable even when you're not trying. Oh, please. You're going to make me conceited. I don't speak idly. There's a reason I've been following you, you know. Following? Oh, you're not like a stalker. Is that what you thought? Well, I... Well, simple. you see, I'm more of an extreme fan. You have to understand that I feel you deserve a super special place in the art world. That I am lucky to have you on my side. Oh, you don't know how lucky yet. <laughs> Kiss me, genius. <laughs> <laughs> Coupon, this little uni bond is going to pay off handsomely and finance your retirement. I don't want to retire anytime soon. I love my work and I don't want to discuss investments now. Yes, you do. Make your little pile and leave it to your kids. But I don't have any kids. <laughs> Aha! Future possible kids. You never know. Do one. <laughs> Marty, let me introduce you to an old friend of mine. Gwyneth Ellsworth. We knew each other in college, but we've only recently become reacquainted. I'm sure I'm dead. <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you. Marty, uh, Gwyneth, Marty is my investment advisor, and he's also a friend, a neighbor, and an art buyer. Ooh. At least of my work. <laughs> oh, and what particular style of Craig's do you collect? Oh, uh, well, I, uh, 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 flower paintings. <laughs> Excellent. I 
I too adore them. Doesn't Craig have an incredible sense of the ensemble effect of floral beauty? Absolutely. I was just saying that to him the other day. And the intriguing way he delineates the finest features of pistols and stamens. I mean, with such precision and artistry, it just gets me so... What marvelous skill he has. <laughs> oh, folks, please, you're embarrassing me. I'm going to clean my brushes up until this fan club meeting is over. <laughs> Craig, Craig's florals uh, are just, uh, I don't know, they, they alter my state of mind. In fact, when I'm in the middle of a bear market, I just glance over at one of his paintings in my dining room wall called Orchid's Orgy. Ah, it's almost <laughs> like the market is up again. <laughs> oh, or, or on my office, that unbelievable reclining nude is so... Reclining nude? not one of those trite things. Ouch. Uh, no, no, no. I said uh, reclining dude. <laughs> reclining dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a guy buried in peonies, li lilies, and lilacs. Yeah, fantastic. And the great thing is, you can hardly see the guy. He's practically invisible under all that uh, pedalage. <laughs> that painting someday, but don't let me interrupt you. I understand you were visiting with Craig to talk about some stock market thing or other. I'll just be over here catching up on work until you two are done. I'll just be a minute. That renaissance fun I was telling you about, forget about it. Are you ready for the big reveal? This is going to take all your contrarian instincts and bring them into the backs. Well, you've got that right. I am a contrarian, so don't even show me. Craig, he's going to bug you. Marty, for a cute guy, you are awfully annoying. <laughs> Tell him. Thank you. As I said, it's very countercyclical, cyclical, but it's a short thing. The Izzy Ramoff countercyclical fund. Tell me your doing business with that creep. It's not what you're thinking. Look at the prospectus. This fund is actually managed by a, a former executive of Goldman Sachs. These guys just license Izzy's name and they call him for his advice. The advice of a felon. What's with you? Hey, Randolph got a bum rap. I mean, his name is unfortunate. I thought he ran off with other people's money. Oh, sure, he's a criminal. But listen, his record on picking stocks is actually superb. <laughs> oh, thanks, Marty. I think I'll stick with pork bellies. Maybe even start painting them. Is that all you've got, Marty? I didn't know you were interested in investing. Oh, certainly. I'm interested in investing. That's one of the reasons I'm here today. And do pardon me for barging into your conversation. Oh, uh, that's all right. Marty doesn't mind. I don't mind either. Are you an uh, active investor? Active? My good man, I have been jockeying my portfolio ever since my dear bunny passed away. What do you take me? Where I stand, I'd say, uh, for a ravishing beauty who also happens to be quite intelligent. <laughs> Sweetly stated. Congratulations, you made my diary. <laughs> but you two finish up. I have more business to do with Craig when you're done. I hope you have something more reasonable to offer him than that ridiculous fund. I can use some assistance managing my billions. And so far, you're not proving your worth. Assistance? <laughs> well, that's my strength. Here, I'll show you. Triple A, endorsed and rated, <laughs> and by the leading companies on Wall Street. I'm telling you, right here. That's all right. Here's my card. Call me. And yours? Did you say you live nearby? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just down the block. This pants are going to be kept. There we go. 1918. Seven houses down that way on the other side of the street. It's a huge Queen Victoria. Blue and white. Pink. Huge pink and blue hydrangeas. <laughs> I might stop by in, say, five or ten minutes to see those paintings you've mentioned and perhaps do some business. Would that be convenient for you? Oh, oh definitely. Good. But now, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak with Craig privately. Sure, sure. I'll leave you two alone. Craig, look over those documents. Be good, you two, now. 
Well, he seems an interesting fellow. Oh, well, that he is. And cute, too. I wouldn't paint him. <laughs> Craig, as I was saying, I'm totally enamored with your floral works, and that's why I've shown you these ideas. Of course. So to make this happen, I would like you to commit to nothing but this project for at least two years. Nothing else? Nothing. I want your full attention. And I'll make it worth your while. You will receive a stipend of $500,000 a year, plus a $100,000 bonus for every major work you complete. Wow. I'm beginning to like this. And? Uh, but wait, there's more? Certainly, the pot needs sweeping. And should you need arts, assistants, carpenters, mold makers, and so forth, my foundation will take care of it. Do you find my offer attractive? Very. You don't sound as thrilled as I would have expected. Don't you see? You don't need those other time wasters, darling. You were, if you were just a dot on the art map before, this will plaster you all over it. This will make you. It is mighty appealing. And yet you hesitate. Well, I... Why? Is it because you want to make more of these banal nudes, these, these pieces of crap? I'll show you what should be done with them. She grabs a can of paint and sprays the air. Then she approaches the nude painting of Nakia. Craig stops her. Oh, you care so much about them? I wish you did about me. Winnie, of course I care about you. I mean, even if you weren't the perfect vision of loveliness that you are, I'd be bowled over by your intellect. Stop You're talking. Amazing, but I'm not sure I understand you. You're like a tornado. And are tornadoes really understood? Don't scientists die every year flying into their whirlwinds, taking measurements and getting consumed? <laughs> Swallowed up. There's no way of measuring. <coughs> you want I want, I want. Well, I want something too. You do? Yes, I do. It's a condition, in fact. In fact? Yes. Okay, out with it. I would like there to be specially funded art training for inner city kids. With all the cutbacks on art education, that's what they need. I'll help their inner spirits grow. What do you think of that? Is that all? From your buildup, I thought you wanted me to reduce the federal deficit. But that one's easy, consider it done. I'm jotting a note. Two million for arts for poor children. It's that easy? <laughs> You'd like it to be hard? Uh, how can you get arts project past your horticultural society? <laughs> Oh, I can see you are going to be a an educate re-education project. Where to begin? Craig, darling, if you're going to work with me, you're going to need to stop thinking like a peon. Well, there's no need to insult me. No. Silly. This idea of yours is go uh, <clears throat> isn't going to any arts council for approval. My private foundation will fund it. I know your arts I education idea is worthwhile just from the sound of it. Sweetie, don't be so disappointed by your good fortune. I'm just having a hard time understanding the way your world works. Mine is relatively simple. I hold this paintbrush, I paint what I believe is beautiful, Anything. And that could be florals, nudes, artichokes, or running armadillos. Then I try to sell it. My world is a bit different. I hold your humble paintbrush. 
I make a decision. Voila, golden paintbrush. But you don't really think that's all I do now, is it? I, I will try not to be offended, but don't you see there's artistry in coming up with the grand landscape altering, mindscape changing ideas? <sighs> Craig, we have to smash the old icons. There's artistry in that. You see now? I see I'll have a mess to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to be so damn arrogant? Baby, I'm sure I'm arrogant. Certainly I'm spoiled. But if you think about it, the world needs people like me to move forward. To, 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 to what? And you need me too. There is no shame here, no embarrassment. I want what I want. And I get what I want. That's all you need to know. So you ponder my offer, my sweet offer. I'll give you till later this afternoon. Gee, that's a huge time window. Make your decision, then I must go and see Marty. Wait, wait, why are you choosing me again? Tell me once more. Is it because you, what, what about what I want, damn it? What about my rights to choose, my own subject and style, huh? What about that? And see, intermission. Excuse me. Before I go into Marty's house, I'd like a word with you. Do I seem like a horrible person? <laughs> Do you feel superior to me, or someone like me, to a woman who knows what she wants? And chances are, you want something, don't you, sir? What do you want out of life? You might not know how to get it. What do you want? A sexy girlfriend? A million or two? In the bank? Do you think a couple of million will make you happy? <sighs> or maybe you just like a little more bigger. <laughs> want to think about that. And ladies, don't think you're off the hook. What do you really want? And do you go out and grab it? If you see a beautiful boy on the beach, do you walk with him? Do you talk with him? Or do you just eat another dog? <laughs> so what's the difference between you and me? Hmm? Think, <clears throat> I just have more resources than you do. I grab what I want, so I get what I want. Just like you would if you could. Just think about that when you see what's to come. And for heaven's sake, stop judging me. <laughs> you know about me or what I do? Not much, but I know you do good work for Craig. <laughs> Thank you. So what I do, and I'm sure you're familiar with this type of service, is provide investment advice. <laughs> Quite lately. Well, yeah, and, and so I have a long list of very happy clients such as yourself. I doubt they're like me. <laughs> well, please forget about the Izzy ran off uh, fun I was talking about earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. Forgotten. <laughs> and uh, this is about Bright Star Renaissance Fund. It's a very balanced and re uh, recession-resistant instrument. Do you really, do you really think I care about bro 
brochures? Well, I do think that they're worth your while. <sighs> do you think I'm being very forward if I say, I hope you find me attractive? Yes. <laughs> but I like it. I like it very much. <laughs> You're so self-assured, masculine, yet <laughs> impish. <laughs> impish. <laughs> And you're so feminine and, uh, imperious. <laughs> do you know what I like to do? No. <laughs> yes. Trash all my investment literature? <laughs> no, guess again. Jump my bones. Out of the question later. <laughs> but guess again. Burn all of the paintings of nudes in the world? Oh, Marty, you're mocking me. Do you think? I think. But you're not far off the mark. I need your help to convince Craig to focus and reinvent himself. As? As the Claude Monet of monumental floral sculptures. I'd like to help you, but I think you have a noble vision of Craig's success. But, but what? These nudes are they are very close to his heart. Yeah, I mean, close to his. Well, yeah, maybe there too, but definitely his heart, okay? Tell me. How attached is he to this trollop he consorts with? You mean her? Ah! Oh, what is it with this woman? What does she have to follow me everywhere I go? Jesus! Do you have something to drink? Sure, scotch, wine, Malbec? Yeah, small back. <laughs> hmm. Nice literal bachelor pad you have here. Mixer, food processor. When he takes a steak knife and cuts the Nikia new thing out of its frame, she puts it in the food processor. <laughs> oh my God! What the hell are you doing? Expressing myself. <laughs> that was a valuable work of art and a gift from Craig. Sorry. I couldn't possibly relax here with that woman <laughs> looking down on me. She had to go. I love that painting. The key has become a good friend of mine in the past couple of years, and I've enjoy always enjoyed how it expresses her grace and personality. Then maybe you lack aesthetic judgment. Stay out of the art world. What am I going to say to Craig when he visits and his painting is gone? Oh, you'll think of something. You're very clever. <laughs> I don't know how I can call this a friendship. What we were just starting to have here. Sweet. Friendships come in many flavors, <laughs> including Malbec flavor. Can I have my wine? <laughs> if I give you this wine, will you promise not to destroy anything else? Mm, yes, probably. Um, but don't fret. I'll compensate you <sighs> for that ugly canvas. And. I will likely admire one of Craig's floral paintings. You have it. <coughs> we'll see it later. Now tell me, do you always come into people's houses and maul things? <laughs> I do have fits of pique. Listen, I'd like you to manage a small account, just 10 million. And if you will allow me, I will let you consult with the my financial advisor, James Ritchie. Here, here's his card. <clears throat> now, where is this floral of Chris? Uh, there is none, sorry. Beg pardon? There is none. Oh, damn, I expected more of you. You shouldn't have. Expectations are so dangerous. What exactly did you expect? You know, honesty, a fib, a white lie. Oh, I'll get over it. Especially because you're so cute. Well, thank you for not being angry at me. Would you like to go out on the patio? It's sweet out there this time of evening, especially with the dry martini. Mm, magic words. Let's do it. They move yeah, outside. outside. You know, 
you're quite an impressive, uh, actually an imposing person. Mm -hmm. Were you always this way? Well, I guess. <coughs> you could say I've always been um, demanding, girl. I drove my folks crazy. And even before I had Bunny's money, I was always this way. I mean, it's hard to know what you demand next. Wouldn't you say that's part of my charm? You know, uh, you're a uh, tempting and frightening person. <laughs> Aww, you sound so cute when you say that. You know, sweetie, that I'm going to need your help. No, God. <laughs> Don't be such a scary cat. All I want is for you to help Craig see the value <coughs> and the truth about this ridiculous bimbo. What? How can you call Nakia a bimbo? She's my friend, too. You mean, how can I use such a tame word for her? The woman's a fool who knows nothing about art, and how dare you defend her? <laughs> Damn, that hurt. Well, it hurts me when you defend a girl who's a, a walking aesthetic disaster. <laughs> well, I won't allow it. Now. Stay away. I'm going to challenge your curatorial vision. Stay away. I don't think I'll stay away. In fact, I'll speak art if I want to. Here. Installation! <laughs> back off! What do you think of that, huh? I don't think I'm going to back off. I doubt it, because it would be too cubistically nihilist of me. <laughs> <laughs> I might take your stipend away. That would put you back in your box. Oh, yeah? Where did I learn all of this kind of thing? Where's this box thing that you're talking about? I've got a box for you right here. Where did you learn that kind of thing? <laughs> the ad libs are even good. I'm self taught. And a scene one. <laughs> Then I rethink it, and I couldn't stand the aggravation. But hey, I got to do something to change my mood, and maybe yours. Can I interest you in a chocolate truffle? Ooh, sinful. We have one. Oh, you would take that one, the fat one that I had my eyes on. <laughs> Snatch the best one away from your girl, why don't you? <laughs> I had no idea. Just kidding, Dopey. <laughs> take whatever you want. They're scrumptious. Aren't they just, what's the word? Sublime. I've swallowed it and it's still alive in my mouth. Like a of dark, deep sensuality. <laughs> May I taste that dark, deep, dark, sensual truffle? Mm -hmm. Fred? <laughs> Fred, so quickly? How on earth are we going to get any work done? I don't know, with you, it's always a dilemma. <laughs> Craig. Okay. Uh, let's work on Langorius. And even though it's a dangerous move, I promise you, I will focus. Good. <laughs> hey, I have a surprise for you. Oh, more treats? You'll see. Okay. <clears throat> 
Nikia unties her raincoat's waist cinch and drops her raincoat to the floor, revealing her pink Whoa! You know I love you in pink. I'll just assume my last position before you get any ideas. Now, if you can move your elbow a bit over here, and this toe, this toe, and this sculpted calf. Were you like this with all your models? A gentleman must keep his secrets. Huh. Come on. No long face. Languor is a pleasant emotion. Relax, lazy, happy, remember? Well, maybe you should start a new painting. You call it Jealous Girlfriend. Here, I'll show you what her face looks like. <laughs> oh, now, Nakia, you're obsessing about nothing. You know, I really don't want to paint from memory, so I'm going to give you an attitude adjustment. There we go. That's better. Hun? Yeah? Have you thought any more about my idea? What idea is that? Come on. Reach back in your memory way back to a few hours ago. <laughs> Oh, about giving up floral paintings and focusing just on nudes of you? It's not so darn absurd. You know, there's definitely a market. The art museum sent you that letter about wanting to do a show of your figurative work, remember? Please, will you return to your position? That's it. Thank you. Well, don't look down your nose at an exclusive show of your nudes. And the market for your flower paintings is declining. It is not. In fact, I had a buyer here today who expressed quite an interest. Wow. People with no taste can be found anywhere. <laughs> I mean, how can a flower or a petal compare to this? Or this? Or this? I mean, sweetie, face it. When you're not doing figurative painting, you are wasting your time. Flowers are just not worthy of your talent. They're like ash. Do you see how it is? I wish I could see. <laughs> oh, not just today. All my life it's been that way. Pardon me, ladies. Can't you tell? Can't you tell from what you've seen so far that I love women? Can you? I hope so, because I adore you ladies. <laughs> Madam, I'm sure I'd be crazy about you if your husband would let me know you. Not here, is he? All right. But why, ladies, do you have to change us? Aren't we good enough as is? Ladies, huh? Hmm? What do you have to say? Are we good enough? Let me hear it. <laughs> all right, 50-50, all right. Admit it, we're never good enough, never good enough. No. Guys, you know how this is. Like this, all right? Yeah, I got it. For the change to come. <laughs> like silly putty, all right? Push us into a cube, and if that's not good enough, Pull us apart in all kinds of different directions. And still, that's not good enough. Uh, we, we do not. <laughs> you are not in this scene. I specifically asked Albert to keep you frozen. <laughs> 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 but I'm the playwright. <laughs> Will you have the decency to let me finish my soliloquy before butting in? <laughs> you know, you see what I'm up against? I lost the train of my tie ready. I'm going to get back into this scene. In this scene that followed, uh, which we're not going to present because we haven't cut it, Nakia sees a model of Independence Hall with one of Craig's floral paintings atop it. It's a giant sculpture. She also learns the existence of Winnie, 
that he and get, gets very jealous, angry about this proposed project. Craig tries to convince her that Guidi's offer of half a million would be great for them as a couple. Nakia returns to the subject of their subsidizing art lessons, which is abandoned for children. She goes off stage to use a bathroom in Craig's house. In rushes Marty. Isn't that like a name? <laughs> well, you could have rung the doorbell or something. I mean, there's a chance I could have been in here with somebody. I couldn't help it. That woman, she's a force of nature. <laughs> Who? Winnie? No, Lady Gaga. <laughs> of course I mean Gwenny. She likes me and she's passionate. <laughs> Was she offended that you didn't have one of her floral paintings in your house? A bit. She was looking forward to seeing one. Did she agree to let you handle her investments? That's not all she let me handle. <laughs> you didn't do that! No, you couldn't have. After I distinctly told you to stay away from her and to have limited contact. What could I do? We talked investments and then she came on to me like a locomotive. And you just had to let her into your station? <laughs> <laughs> I resisted. I threw my brochures at her. Oh, you were fierce. <laughs> Look, I brought your macadamia nuts. I cared about that woman. You already have a girlfriend. Oh, and what are you, a pal who decides on his friend's quota for women? Like, I've got to weigh in with, your, with you. What kind of a friend are you? Look, when it counts, I'm a good friend. I'm a damn good friend. I pride myself on that. Think about it. Ignore your infatuation for a moment. Do I look after your needs or what? Your best interests? Well, I guess you... I do. Always. And don't I call and visit often and uh, show that I care? You do. So, those are the real measures of friendship. Not whether you're up or down one fleeting girlfriend. <laughs> now listen, she's coming this way very soon. And she wants to know your decision about the painting. You know, the styles. She's on her way. She's out in her limo. She's making calls or making some appointments or doing some business, whatever the hell it is. But she said she's going to be in here shortly. Did you decide what you're going to do? No, 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 not yet. Hello again, gentlemen. You have such a lovely neighborhood. The incredible, colorful variety of the tulips lining the driveways, the Asian honeysuckle. The hanging romanzia. Oh, we must stare around some evening and smell their perfume. Do you feel as lucky as I do? I think I speak for both of us when I say that we both feel lucky that you are now in our lives. <laughs> I'm so delight. Oh, I'm ready to be laborious. I've considered that emotion and I feel <laughs> Uh, Nakia, I'd like you to meet Gwen. Hello. Uh, hello. Remember I spoke to you about her? Oh, yes. Are you... You're the person that might be giving Craig a nice deal? Mm -hmm. I suppose that's one way you can think of me. But yes, I am. And are you the one who created that? That would be me. And aren't you the model for those awful nude paintings? Honey, who does this woman think she is? Nakia, Craig can make a lot of money by following Queenie's advice on the subject of beauty. <clears throat> well, my head is spinning. Is anyone interested in what I care about? Marty, I'm glad you mentioned money. Miss Ellsworth? I'm going to make you a very attractive offer. Here, take this dollar and go before I make your life miserable. You really couldn't want Craig to spend his career painting you in the pot for pennies. That's, well, like painting Velvet Elvis's dear. Oh. <laughs> I am pouring myself a bourbon. <laughs> Since you suggested cash, I happen to have five crisp thousand dollar bills. Right there. <coughs> Go buy yourself some good clothes. <laughs> I've had about enough about you. 
enough of you. You need to get out. <clears throat> do you believe the nerve of this woman? No, you don't, do you? <laughs> and do you think, do you think that I'm going to allow this street woman to stop the world from knowing Craig Carson's genius? Like hell I am. All of you actors freeze in this next scene, which I also had to cut. Nakia charges Gwitty with the model of Independence Hall and attacks her. They fight by grabbing scarves and shouting insults at each other. Nakia has a scene where she extols her own beauty. Gwitty tells the audience she's not going to let this street woman stop her plans for Craig. <coughs> Side stage, Gwitty makes a phone call that causes Nakia to lose a key account. Craig is destroyed. <coughs> <laughs> Albert, why don't you return to your seat and let us finish this? Albert, can't you see that we're too agitated to listen to you? Really, Albert, I never thought that I would that I would agree with her, <laughs> but she's right. I just want to work with Craig. I have enough trouble as it is. What is it? I'm going to give you some advice, buddy. Do what's best for you as an artist. Follow your own values. Or I'll have to do it for you. No need to threaten me, buddy. All right? It's what I want. It's what I was going to do. <coughs> I do it for my art. If you knew anything about me, you would know that. Now, can we please settle this ourselves? Listen to me. The person who cares the most about you here is Nakia. Go with her. Paint the nudes. Go ahead, you'll be happy if you do it. I guarantee you that. Sometimes you're so damn arrogant. What makes you think that I have to listen to you? <laughs> I invented you, buddy, so I can tell you what to do. <laughs> it's my job. I can put words in your mouth. No, you can't. And that goes for me as Craig, and for me, the actor, Chris Kaiser. Get it? We both live for our artistic freedom. You should understand that. Now go back to your seat. Do what Craig says. <laughs> he well, always. They forced my hand. I hope you didn't mind my interruption. <laughs> he always makes trouble. I think we owe it to him to listen. I mean, he did invent us. <laughs> That's better. I love it. This is the way I see it. This art commission gig's going to empower both of them, see? And, and there's no way that Craig is going to allow Gwitty to banish Nakia from this house. Craig has his, some scruples. I made sure of that when I created him. So Craig will have to work part-time in Gwitty's artist colony, making huge flower sculptures. Nakia will live and continue to pose for the love of her life the rest of that time. Nakia can work with poor kids, which is what she really wants to do anyway. Gwynnie and Martin. Gwynnie gets what she wants, to be a major patron of the arts. And Marty. And as for Marty, well, he's Marty. <laughs> it's a shame, but art, money, and love are on a constant collision course. On the positive side, playwrights wouldn't have anything to write about it. Otherwise, would they? But uh, I think I've said enough. Maybe too much. So, what's your answer? I'll be happy to move into your penthouse with you. <laughs> but. <clears throat> but? You have the temerity to give me a but? But? Tell me your expectations. <clears throat> All right. You'll be very secure. Um, do well with the sample, and you'll be you'll do very well. <sighs> Fumble, 
and you'll still do well, just not managing my money. Then you'll live with me and keep me good company. Can you live with this plan? Happily. Hmm. Provided one thing. Name it. You'll have to promise never to be so cruel again to somebody who I care. Cruel? Where do you get such notions? <laughs> I'm suddenly Cruella de Vil? I must say, your idea of cruel and mine of preserving standards, well, they're just at odds. But I do want you in my life. And so I can be flexible. I promise to I promise to consult you. I'll take that as a cup half full. So you'll have nothing to do with Nikia? As long as she stays out of my hair. And respect Craig, he's my best friend. Of course I'll respect him. What do you think this has all been about? Disrespect? Come on! Winnie, I, you know how you can get. Use restraint, self-control. Stop lecturing me. Shh, I'm coming back. <clears throat> so, Craig, Marty and I have to go. But um, what do you say about our arrangement? Well, I'll work in your artist colony, Laura, by day. But the evenings are mine. Uh, if you must commit to such folly, I shall blame it on Albert, the poor misguided soul. <laughs> Farewell, tragic creature. Tragic? I don't think so. Oh? Oh, <laughs> Cricky, tell her it's not her house. Oh. oh. But, but it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> they pose and paint adoringly. The end. appropriation um, in the arts, um, but it made me think about cultural appropriation in a way different um, format, and I will say only that it's because I think Craig is a talented artist who is also a flaky artist who can, <laughs> who can travel between both worlds to his, to his benefit, so yeah. Uh, I like the one line where she um, cuts out and says to the ladies, like, do you go after the guy that's good looking or do you eat a donut? <laughs> <laughs> Any other affirmations? Sheila? Um, I agree with her. I love how they came out this scene. And they connected with the audience, which is real nice. So they actually look at the audience members. And she's, that added a really nice touch to it. And there were great, great commitments in it. And uh, everyone carried it through. Uh, and I love how um, it, it was the, the setup, it was all one stage scene, mm -hmm. which was great because you don't have to have all those props and all those things. And it was so well done. Yeah, I think considering the uh, from the parameters of the stage and everything, you guys did a really great job. Um, that would be my thing is uh, the scenes were really well executed. I guess that's to Pat. And also the playwright for making a very producible piece because four actors were able to pull it off, plus the stage directions, which wouldn't be read out loud in a real production. So that's really um, crispy, nice, clean, producible. <laughs> Yes, Robert. Yeah, I pretty really like the uh, one interaction when the guys got back together after the one guy had the little uh -huh. twist, that one line, and you're going to be like that guy who 
friend limits their friends to how many girlfriends they can have. I thought that was a, <laughs> I thought that was a pretty, pretty great line. Yeah, there are a lot of quotable lines. Any other affirmations? You can gush over uh, Oh, when did you start writing it? <laughs> well, I would guess like 2011. Um, I, I staged uh, an independent uh, stage reading of this play in 2012. And it was uh, much longer. If you think this was wordy, that was much wordy. <laughs> and we also had uh, uh, Albert, the playwright, was in a cow costume doing all kinds of things, <laughs> <laughs> running around the stage. Somebody advised me to cut that thing. So I was like, oh, it's not working. Like, cow. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've actually moved into questions for the playwright, you had a question for your Yeah, so I, I recording. Oh, sorry. Okay, wait, no. Um, so what I didn't understand was how Nakia knew about Gwyneth. There was a scene that was cut that okay. I, um, I'll either have to restore or provide some connective tissue where she says, what is that? Referring to the, uh, Independence Hall with the flower on top of it, prop, mm -hmm. and uh, and he, Craig says, oh, that's nothing. Paying no attention, so we cut that, but we've got to connect the tissue. So we, you don't understand why she's a jealous girlfriend. Right, I'm sorry. Is it jealous of his room? They're right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, questions for the playwright? Sure, yeah, back the winner of our lottery? Oh, sir. No, I'm no. not the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the winner. Go ahead. My question to the playwright is that you need to do some foreshadowing or... That's a or, suggestion. Could you yeah. form any questions? Well, it's connected to the question. Oh. Okay. Unless, uh, unless you, you want me to hold it. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Where the dialogue took so long to to make its points a reference to this woman, and which I believe you could have done it faster by mm -hmm. foreshadowing it and and give it a a preview of sorts. To twenty years old. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, because by the time you go into the second act, you discover specific things, and the dialogue and action change significantly, that it it moved along much faster, and with a different beat, with a with a, a new residence. So you know, it, it was good. I enjoyed it. So the foreshadowing could like uh, build the tension also. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Well, and then to your right, I think you had a question. Your hand. Oh, um, I wanted to say I really like the breaking frame, and I know it's so hard to work that into a play. And I was wondering, was the longer version, was there more of that? Because I don't think we'd want much more of that. But mm -hmm. it, it was a nice amount, I thought, nice of amount. breaking frame. No, I yeah. think we cut it, but. Um, it was a larger uh, area, and the actors actually previously went out and really like almost threatened the audience, you know, confronting individuals. I don't remember, and just haven't seen it for the first time. How far into the script does that happen for the first time? Because it kind of took me by surprise. I Ooh, remember. very early. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, his character. Yeah. 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 It's uh, behind his yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. maybe four or five pages. Yeah. Okay. Because so he gives him that. Right. <laughs> oh, right. And immediately My recall is terrible. Um, you have a question for the player. Yeah. So in this play, is, is, might assume that this is the first time Craig's had to deal with the philanthropist directly. It's the first time he's he's meeting her. We, we or just her. received a, somebody directly who's a philanthropist and wanted to do something. Yeah, he's her. never had a rich patron offer before. Right. You think it, he should be more impressed by that, perhaps? Uh, you know, I was confused because he has so much money that he has a financial. You know, I thought, oh, oh. He must, I think in my mind, I was like, oh, oh he probably. He's already rich. 
Yeah. Yeah, okay, but this is on a different scale, so make the scale yeah. more clear. Yeah, no, it's fine, but I did get it. Yeah, it definitely came true. across that he'd never dealt with somebody. Who... But see, to me that speaks to a, um, a broader question, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, what you say about...